been a while since I've made any videos, and I'm sure some of you guys have wondered what the hell's happened to me. But uh, basically, I found that uh, these tutorials, especially, take take an awful lot of time to make, and with me working full time and with my family life and and such, I, I just don't have the amount of time to dedicate to them that that's required. So uh, I, I thought about it a little bit and. I'm thinking rather than, than do the full-length tutorials and even the more involved instructional videos, I, I'd try something new and try just to do, do some like tips and tricks videos, just short five to ten minute videos just to show you real basic machining operations. Just something to keep the videos flowing and keep the information flowing and uh, keep my, my finger in, in, into the uh, operation. So, uh, so let, I thought I'd try, you know, start out today and, and make a short one just to see how it works out, and uh, we'll see where it leads from there. I've, I've got a pretty good list of, of things that I can, can do these videos on, so uh, I'd still like to share that information with you guys, and so I thought, thought I'd just give this a try and see how it works. So uh, let's see what happens. So every now and then you'll uh, run across a part that's uh, large diameter but uh, short in length, and it'll be a finished part. And you want to chuck it up in the lathe and do, an, do a secondary operation on it. You know, maybe bore it out or turn the outside diameter down or something or cut a slot in the end here. And you want the part to run through. So there's, there's lots of ways to get it to run through. Uh, one way is just use the, uh, the finished surfaces on the jaws and push your part against it. I mean, that's fine, but maybe the backside's not finished or maybe like in this case, there's a step in the part, and it won't allow the part to reach those, those surfaces. So it's going to have to be kind of halfway in. So that uh, limits, limits your uh, options. Um, one thing you can do, obviously, is uh, run an indicator on this finished surface. But that's going to take some time, right? You've got to go around and tap around on the part and check it with the indicator until you get it running true. But there's a, there's a simpler way to do it. Um, I don't know if it's, it's not a, uh, a lot of you guys may have seen something like this already, but uh, basically all it is is a uh, piece of steel bar stock with a slot milled in the end of it and a cross, pin, cross hole for a dowel pin and has a, about a half by 3 16 ball bearing running in the slot. Okay. Uh, this is just a bearing I had laying around in the scrap bin, so I just grabbed it. The size is not critical at all. But uh, all you do is just mount this thing in your tool holder, like so. You want to try and get it kind of perpendicular, perpendicular to the part, so you get the full width of the bearing bearing on the part, so it doesn't mark it up. And then. Uh, all you do is uh, to use it, you just turn on your uh, your lathe. You can see the part's got a pretty good wobble to it. Okay, and then all you do is move the uh, the tool in until it starts pushing on the part, and it'll straighten it right out, just like that. And it does a pretty good, pretty darn good job of it. I can throw an indicator on there. Now that it's all lined up, and hopefully we'll we'll be pretty darn close. Let's see here. What do we have? Okay, looks like we're in within a ten thousandth or two. Hardly any run out at all. So that's as good as you can get with an indicator at a, in a fraction of the time. So uh, you, know, you, might, you guys might want to uh, make this a little project, crank out one of these pusher tools. It can save you a little bit of time. That's all I have today. We'll see you next time.